I will be talking about cleft lip and palate in children. So cleft lip and palate happens in the fetal development when structures just don't come together. Um, for cleft lip, there are four types. The first one being unilateral, where it occurs on one side of the lip. The second is bilateral, where it occurs on both sides of the lip. The third one is complete, where it extends up to the nostrils. And the final and fourth one is incomplete, where the there's only lip involvement, so the cleft would only come here on the lip, and not up, not down, just on the lip. The cleft palate, there is a complete cleft from the hard palate to the soft palate. Um, there's also a, an, an incomplete, which cause, or which includes the cleft from the soft palate only, which means there is a opening on the roof of the mouth, which is called the hard palate. Um, some statistics for you would be that cleft lip and palate is the fourth most common birth defect, and it also is the number one congenital defect of the face. The prevalence of cleft lip and palate is one in 600 life births. So it's kind of common and you don't have to worry about you thinking that you're the only person who has a baby with cleft lip and palate or palate. Um, a question you might ask is, it, can it be prevented? The answer is yes. Although there are no clear causes of cleft lip and palate, or cleft lip or palate, um, there are some suggestions that drinking and smoking while pregnant or vitamin deficiency or taking certain medications while you're pregnant, along with um, genetics, could also play a part on if a person can get cleft lip and palate while pregnant. Um, most experts, they agree that um, there should be less exposure to teratogenic factors um, because it will definitely reduce the risk of a cleft. I guess there's been studies shown that people who use teratogenic like medications they end up having children with cleft palate or lip. Um, another question you might be asking is, can cleft lip or palate be repaired? The answer is yes. There is reconstructive surgery um, showing that it has evolved in fixing cleft lip or palate. Um, usually it should be re repaired three to six months after giving birth for the best outcomes. It is possible to get surgery done within the nine to 18 month period, but anything over that is most likely to be unsuccessful. Catching it early and doing surgery early on is what helps children have a more normal looking face Um, as this is difficult for most children, as they get older, they, mo they may undergo more surgeries just because of the severity of the cleft lip or palate. Um, as the child does get surgery, he also, he or she, um, also does get a team that gets involved with treatment for nutrition, speech, hearing, dental development, and appearance because it can take a toll on most children about how they look, which is crucial for doing that 
three to six months when you have a child who ha does have cleft lip and palate. Um, how will it affect the speech of the child? So after tr surgery, most children will be, <clears throat> excuse me, most children will be able to have like normal speech, um, and others will need more assistance in involving, uh, improving their speech. So children with clefts may experience language delays in their vocabulary or putting sentences together along with articulation problems with like producing sounds correctly um <clears throat> uh, there also is articulation errors this is because children learn sounds when they have clefts sometimes and when they get the surgery their sounds are different and they have to relearn the sounds again um, there is also hypernasality with children who have cleft lip and palate because of the opening. Um, this may be too much nasal sound and like resonating in the nasal cavity. Um, it also could lead to nodules in the vocal folds because when a child he produces too much volume or he like increases it they increase their volume which allows them to do vocal abuse and it increases the volume of the sounds because they don't they can't hear themselves or they're they they have an opening that doesn't allow them to produce the sounds correctly. What can you do as a parent? As a parent, the most important thing you can do is be supportive and understanding. After surgeries, doctors will give instructions on how to clean the cleft lip and palate. Um, the cleft team will advise when it is allowed for children to eat solid foods. The children will need um, many treatments to help them later in life. So you don't have to worry, there is a team that will help you get through everything your child needs. And that concludes my presentation. Thank you.